Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Face the Nation. We've been dedicating a lot of time on Face the Nation to speak about the Prevention of Terrorism Act and the ICCPR Act. Uh, these two pieces of legislation that are meant to protect the people are of course uh, being used in a manner uh, that suppresses the general public. This is a public secret and many have spoken out against this. Many have promised reform. I think the reforms on the PTA have been promised since the day it was uh, enacted. And it was initially enacted, of course, as a temporary provisions act, but it is to date being used to suppress the people. And this is something that the general public knows. This is a public secret, if you will. We've got, of course, with us today, as, as we always do, an expert panel to discuss these matters and everything else that's going on in Sri Lanka as well. Up first, of course, uh, President's Council, Yuar De Silva. He's an advisor to the Ministry of Justice. Of course, a lot to take out of him uh, with as to what kind of advice he's giving the Ministry of Justice these days. Thank you very much, uh, President's Council, Yuar De Silva, for joining us on our program today. Uh, we've also got Attorney at Law, Javid Yusuf. He's a former member of the Constitutional Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Yusuf, for joining us on our program today. Uh, we've also got Attorney Tivanka Atiagala. Thank you very much for joining us on our program today. And we've also got Attorney at Law Hijaz Hezbollah, a man who needs no further introduction. Thank you very much for joining us on our program once again. So as we always do, Mr. De Silva, I can remember a few months back, you were seated in that exact same position. Uh, we were discussing much of the similar topics. But the reason why this has come back into the fore, uh, if you will, is because the government took uh, a promise and they gave an assurance that the PTA will not be used. Uh, this was, of course, before they arrested uh, Vasanta Mudalige, uh, the convener of the IUSF. Uh, they immediately arrested him and now the PTA is in play again. What is the government's true stance of the PTA? Because there was this massive urge to pass the Anti-Terrorism Act uh, and it, the first draft was bought. Uh, the general public or, or much of the opinion was that this is worse than the PTA. Then they bought a second draft of the ATA and now that too has faded into oblivion. All the while, the PTA is fully active and still fully in force. Your time starts now. Thanks to uh, Face the Nation. Uh, we discussed this matter initially when uh, the government uh, introduced uh, ATA, Anti-Terrorism Act, and uh, Justice Fuller, my learned friend, was also there when we were discussing. And we said there, there should be some sort of reforms. And uh, because of that, I suppose, after our discussions were over, they they temporarily withdrawn, mm. and they give they have given the opportunity <coughs> to various authorities to come forward and give their suggestions and their views. So on that basis, uh, they have prepared a new uh, anti-terrorism act, and then uh, they are they are going to produce, and it was published in September. So this is the second draft. Second draft. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. So now it will be uh, put it to the parliament, mm -hmm. and uh, once the order, it was there in the order paper. People can go to Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and uh, then if they have grievances, they can uh, inform Supreme Court. Anybody can go there. So that is the uh, best way of uh, expressing our views, because uh, the Constitution itself says that uh, anybody can go before Supreme Court and mm. uh, challenge this particular bill. That's At the moment, it's a bill. Mm. So, uh, after that, uh, the Supreme Court will convey their uh, views to the uh, Speaker. Mm. Thereafter, it will be debated and then we can see the new uh, act will come into operation after the Speaker signs. So, so is, is, is the government really serious about this second draft? Uh, do they seriously believe that this is much better and, and, and an apt replacement for the PTA? Personally, what I suggest is, now on the face of it, people can say various things. Hmm. But I, I, my personal view is that in, if you go to the other country laws also, you can't have a particular definition hmm. for terrorism. 
it says what is terrorism and then they give a lot of examples and then only we can uh, whether the people will come uh, into that or not the authorities will see that it is coming under that categories or not is the issue hmm. so then because of that the uh, people will say this is not properly defined and uh, various thing most of the people they they are relying on first two three uh, sections only hmm. but i i say pta as you quite correctly pointed out pta we have the uh, experience in 1989-88-89-90 period where they used the confession hmm. given to the ASP or above and try to apprehend or the, uh, send the uh, people to jail. Hmm. So we, because of that we fought very hard hmm. and then they, uh, we showed to the country that it's a draconian law. So that is why I say it has been changed. In this particular act, that that section is not there. Mm. Uh, no ASP uh, recording uh, statement, and it is not going to use that. If a person is interested in giving a statement, it it should be to the magistrate. Mm. Magistrate will record it, and there are provisions also to safeguard that. Mm. Then only they can use that uh, if that is properly recorded. So likewise, there are there are. Uh, things that had been changed uh, hmm. from the PTA, uh, especially the detention orders hmm. and the remanding person, keeping a person there and the bail orders also, we will discuss later. But at the moment, what I see, we can improve that if hmm. I, not only myself, the others also can express their views. And on that basis, sometimes the government will uh, change to some extent to uh, show that it is a good thing that we are what we are doing is uh, charlotte we, we must concentrate that we are concentrating on terrorism not other people the peop uh, police will use it for some other pers um, uh, purposes but the uh, government I is not at fault uh, sorry <laughs> but the government can't be held at fault yeah, that's what i'm saying so iccpr act also same thing hmm. so they it, it's a good law and the people and we have the experience they are using section 3 and put everybody into uh, remand so that is what i say the law is there hmm. but the people who well, are using it don't know how to use it that, Thank you very much, uh, President's Counsel Yuar De Silva. We now move our attention to Attorney at Law Javid Yusuf, former member of the Constitutional Council. Um, Mr. Yusuf, uh, you've had a lot of experience with um, human rights, fundamental rights, and of course, how uh, authorities violate that of the people. Now, I think uh, President's Counsel Yuar De Silva said something uh, very interesting. He said that you know the law is good, but the people who enforce the law are doing it wrong. They are either misinterpreting uh, due to want of more knowledge or they are purposefully misusing this law to suppress the people is there really nothing that can do to be put as a safeguard for this and and can the government you know say i'm sorry the law is good we passed the law but uh, those who use it are bad your time starts now yeah in response to that that the people who implement the law uh, either misuse it deliberately or otherwise uh, we can come to that later but mm. I think the first question that has to engage our minds is whether an anti-terrorism act is required mm. now the anti-terrorism act or the PTA was meant to deal with extraordinary situations mm. but it has gone beyond that. As we know, uh, the PTA has been in existence for uh, maybe nearly 50 years and it has a uh, bad track record where it has been abused totally over the years and we know only the high profile cases. Hmm. But what about the s small man, hmm. you know, whose arrest or his incarceration does not uh, get the attention of the media and public. They suffer in silence and then there is no remedy for them. Hmm. But my point is, if you want to deal with an extraordinary situation, you don't need the PTA hmm. because there is the Public Security Act, hmm. which can be invoked at a necessary point of time. 
The president doesn't need approval from parliament. He no. can do that on his own. He can do it, but that is a point that the public sec any regulations which are brought before the under the Public Security Act have to be presented to parliament, and within one month it has to get approval. Hmm. So there is continuous oversight, hmm. not only from the judiciary but also from parliament mm. where general tendencies for instance the very uh, fact the thing that uh, uh, president's council mentioned mm. uh, like if there is a continuous abuse these can be raised and have been raised in parliament so there is continuous oversight of uh, the law that is being implemented to deal with a particular situation mm. And that is sufficient because now if you look at 1971 when there was an insurrection that was dealt with under the Public Security Act. But there are also there were abuses. But the chances of abuses were minimized because parliamentary oversight was there. Hmm. Now if you put this, uh, this uh, either PTA or ATA or whatever, it is fixed in the statute and then people forget about it. Hmm. And then but the PTA does this or the ATA will do is that the police and particularly if they are not trained in the proper way uh, and don't have a keen sense of justice they arrest arrest now investigate later whereas it should be the other way you investigate of course in an extraordinary situation you may not have time hmm. that's why you have an extraordinary law in operation but no. I'm, I mean, to speak, to speak just freely, <coughs> what's happening in Sri Lanka, I mean, people are getting arrested for joking. People are getting arrested for joking. That's how ridiculous the situation is. So in that context, can you really, you know, make this right? No, that, that is exactly the point. Anybody can be arrested under the PTA virtually and then later you have to take remedial measures and so on and so forth. I want to just uh, uh, cite one very important uh, uh, incident which uh, I just saw on the TV just before I came, so I don't have all the facts, but I know DIG Nalakadi Silva, head of the terrorist investigation division, was arrested in 2018 when he had got a warrant for the arrest of Zaran and he was hot on the heels of Zaran when he was arrested. And he was taken off that because he was the head of TID and thereafter the warrant execution all, uh, was forgotten. Hmm. Merely on the say-so of a non-entity called uh, Namal Kumar, hmm. who self-styled the secretary of the Dushana Virodi Peramun or something like that. Now imagine that they just arrested it and if Nalaka Silva had not been arrested and if we had pursued the warrant on Zaran, we might have a different story to tell to him. So you see, you don't know where this type of uh, uh, draconian legislation can have an impact. Hmm. Now, normally we discuss what we say where it has impacted individuals or impacted individuals' families because it does impact families. Hmm. It's not only the individual. Families are left without a breadwinner. Hmm. If they actually commit a crime, law must take its course. There is no problem about hmm. it. So that is why I, my view is that we don't need a anti-terrorism act. We have the public security ordinance hmm. and even the public security ordinance, there could be changes in the regulation hmm. and it has been debated in parliament many um, years and years ago. Hmm. Where, where you will, if you go through Hansard, you will see valuable contributions hmm. by Dr. Colvin R. De Silva, Esnades and QC. They were analysing the shortcomings in the regulations of the public security act, but this is uh, I mean, those that is temporary, whereas the PTA has had it has it, the very meaning of 
prevention of terrorism has been turned <laughs> upside down because when the PTA was uh, first introduced, the number of so-called terrorists you could count on your fingers. Under the PTA, terrorism bloomed, as you would call it. And you know, we had a uh, terrible civil war where mm. many people lost their lives, limbs, and also it strained relations between communities. Thank you very much, Attorney at Law Javid Yusuf. We now move our attention to the Assistant Legal Secretary of the Samagi Janabala Vegir and the organizer for Kalavan of the SJB, Attorney at Law Tivanka Artegala. Now, the SJB, of course, being in the opposition <coughs> at this point of time, is always voicing, uh, raising their voice against the ATA, against uh, these acts that are committed under the pretext of uh, the ATA or the ICCPR. But can you give an outright assurance to the general public that these suppressive legislation <coughs> will be completely done away with uh, without any hesitation, without any delay, um, at whichever time an SJB government or an SJB president uh, is in power? Simple answer is yes. And that's not because it's quite convenient for me to say so. Hmm. It's because we, our leader, our party, we've always been trying to pursue this. Hmm. But then again, after the down after the covid and then the downfall this was not our priority mm. you had to get your priorities there mm. because at that time there was political turmoil mm. then what happened the economy the economy fell mm. then political turmoil so when the economy and politics fail a country goes into chaos mm. which we saw mm. so at that time coming back the next year mm. in march it, it we never thought that the ata will be on the on the plate Mm -hmm. So that was not, not our focus. Our simple answer is yes, this is a, a temporary bill, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, a temporary act. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, uh, you know, go for another year and another year and another year. So how hard do you think it is, is it really to get rid of this? It's not that, it's not that difficult. You don't uh, sign it in for one more year, that's it. <laughs> From the date of signing, it's been a temporary act. Mm -hmm. And it's been taken in, taken in, taken in, and in 22 they bring in a, a new amendment, hmm. like tweaking the sections hmm. here and there. 18 months brought down to 12. Magistrate can visit and all the little small twerks. Same thing is seen in the ATA, but not in the first draft. Hmm. In the second draft, they bring the same amendments back again, and like so. I don't know. So first hand, when you have political and economic crisis, I don't know why this bill. The ATA bill and the uh, Prevention on Terrorism Act is on the forefront of the government. Hmm. You should look into first stabilize the country. And then there's this also this additional piece of legislation, I believe, yeah. the online safety bill. Online safety, definitely. So rather than working on this, on trying to uh, get the control of the masses by force, I think if you try to stabilize the country, politically and economically, basically, that will be a start. So that's what we've been working on. Our party had been putting the economic policy from the day we took over the opposition. And we have no problem, whoever uses it, because it will only benefit the country. Hmm. So, you want assurance? We've always given it. And not that we don't uh, take this thing seriously, because we, we don't rely on this. Hmm. We don't want the online safety field to come into power. We don't want the ATA. Hmm. We disregard the PWA. We don't want to use it. It's prevention against terrorism. When it's turned around and when it's used against your citizens, so then citizens become terrorists. Hmm. You can't do that, like you said, when you use it against Vasanthi Budulige, you don't need uh, to have degree in law, big, to be highly educated to understand. Hmm. That person coming onto the road and protesting whether that's a nuisance or not, that should be dealt accordingly. Hmm. But that is not terrorism. <laughs> you should draw a line. So I say something today, I can be taken in. So online safety, I take something, I post something, so I don't know what we believe is. <coughs> this is trying to stop the next Aragale by force. Mm. So because when people came onto the roads and there were peaceful protests and there were arrests and they were taken in, in at night, 10, 9, whatever the time and uh, magistrates came out and said, no, you have a right to protest, mm. peaceful protest, don't block the roads, mm. don't into the public, have your protest. That was permitted. Mm. They tried bringing the masses to court, to court, to court. No, magistrates allowed it. They said, no, you have a constitutional right. Mm. We'll uphold it. But 
you can't stop the general movement of the public you can't hinder the public hmm. have your protest hmm. so that is permitted not in this country in every country but then when you turn down to terrorism that's a totally different story how can you use the pta against all these citizens so you have to draw a line who is a terrorist and who is not not that we are saying total uh, legislation should be thrown no now there is no war there is no terrorism we don't know how the future might be we have to be careful yes true but we have the penal code you can make it stronger like my learner senior said the public uh, security act is always there emergency regulation is always uh, put into force when and ever it is needed hmm. now when you take the present uh, ata bill as well as the online safety act hmm. already the office of uh, the high commissioner for human rights on the 18th of october as well as i believe on the 30th of october they have already put out their Position. uh, positions hmm. by the experts and they are saying no this is not going to work hmm. so what we don't understand is the government saying that they are trying to stabilize this country the utmost focus this whole year had been on this so march they want to bring in a bill now in uh, september, september uh, 15th i believe they want to bring in bill so all right but what we are saying is there are place your focus mm. understand what's wrong stabilize the country mm. then look at it because now without stabilizing you can't expect the people to stay in the houses also they are going to come out mm. it's difficult it's not easy when you say economic crisis we have health issues no medicine no doctors we have to go to uh, private uh, pharmacies to buy it, not to do that the bigger so. the bigger issue rather than no medicine no doctors is having <laughs> fake medicine <laughs> True. Being given to you True. by so government now, hospitals. When you see, real <laughs> by real doctors. <laughs> real doctors. Now, when you see, the minister has been changed. If you can, so that means it's not working. Hmm. So what we believe, as the opposition, we don't want to always come in and pull the leg of the government and say no, that's not fine, that's fine. If you are doing it right, we will always support you. It might politically not be favourable to us, but we want the people to understand. If it's good, we are always there. Hmm. But then again. just to show that we are always there whatever the government they are not going to say hmm. we are not going to approve and we are not going to stand by it so when you take the pta or the ata bill what they want to bring in and even the iccpr we brought it because we are a dualist country we are bring it into power hmm. but section 3 is haphazardly used people are just taken in and it's actually public humiliation to us we say we are a uh, buddhist country we take a foreigner saying that there's a dharma chakra and the supreme court comes out and says the rest is arbitrary and malicious such a humiliation no hmm. so i don't think you can always turn around and say the police is not educated enough if they are not train them hmm. because people are suffering they come and haphazardly use all these acts which are put into power and then coming and turn and say no it's the police who did it no, we don't believe so so now the ata detention order the dig will get it through the mini, uh, uh, ministry secretary hmm. so then isn't the secretary involved so, so the, the secretary also has to be incompetent and incompetent inept. so that i'm not saying that sec- the secretary competent or what i'm saying the government is involved you can't turn around and you know distance yourself and say no it's the police who is messing around not us no <laughs> if the police is messing around and you know it's not working do something about it Thank you very much, Attorney at Law Sivan Khatigal. We now move our attention to Attorney at Law uh, Hijaz Hizbullah. Uh, well, you ha- are, are in a very uh, extraordinary position, I would say, as a man who's been fighting for fundamental rights, who has uh, studied these acts and these pieces of legislation inside out, and then uh, to be on the receiving end uh, and, and and suffer at the hands, of course, of this act, and then to be uh, held to be, you know, completely. <laughs> free from or any wrong doing under those acts um the pta was used then it stopped for a while it started uh, the, the assurances were given it started again with the arrest of wasanta mudalige uh, and i believe yesterday a uh, parliamentarian uh, shanakin rasamanikam moved an adjournment debate about uh, some things that happened in the north where uh, one person was arrested for selling a cake Uh, another 18 year old boy was arrested uh, for accompanying his father uh, who provided a sound system for a certain event that the government was or the police in the area was not in favor of being held um so with this renewed use of the PTA do you think that um 
government is trying to normalize the use of this PTA again. Um, how do you think this will stand with the international community coming down so hard on us? Because the EU has, on several occasions, even threatened to uh, you know, revoke the GSP plus concession on us, which will make us suffer economically a lot. But um, the government doesn't seem to be quite deterred by that. Well, uh, Shalan, unfortun unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, it's the uh, threats like the GSP Plus that actually does work with the government. And it's unfortunate because the government uh, responds only to those uh, sticks. Hmm. Uh, no amount of public pressure, no amount of people signing on the road, uh, signing petitions uh, in, in on that's, that's uh, put out on display on the road, going on protest marches actually motivates or deters the government to take steps against the PTA. Why? Because these laws are not there for the people. These laws are there to protect governments. So people protesting against the PTA or the ATA does not really uh, hurt or bother the government or it does, they do not take it seriously because actually they are doing it for themselves, the people in power. Hmm. So the only thing that will really work is is a GSP plus. So I think I'm, I'm, I uh, need to do some research on this. But I what I what I do feel is that somewhere somewhere from 2022 onwards, hmm. uh, the GSP uh, concessions were being negotiated. They were on review. They were on review, and therefore for those purposes, the government did backtrack and promise that they will not use the PTA and that they will bring in a new law. Uh, now, what I need to do the research in where the timelines and where these negotiations stand. But I think somewhere in May, June, the negotiations reach some level of uh, finality and certain promises have been made by the EU. And I think the government has now gone back into the comfort zone. And that is why the PTA is making its way back mm -hmm. we also see uh, the 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 ata mm -hmm. now the ata was originally presented uh, not 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 presented in parliament uh, and then we had a we had a we had a uh, it was published in the gazette mm -hmm. in september but not tabled in parliament and so we do not know whether the ata is going to come or not but i think it's all to do with what's going on in the eu and the gsp plus issue Right, so if you ask me, is it because the government wants to normalise the PTA and all of that? I think it's it's not really that. Hmm. I think it's a lot to do with what's what's going on with the GSP plus negotiations. So I think they have reached some sort of a comfort zone, and they're bringing the PTA back in. So they are ready to use the PTA uh, again. So, but but wouldn't using the PTA means jeopardising those promises and jeopardising the? continuity of the GSP plus because the EU has always been against it well I feel that's 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 I, I feel that uh, maybe they have uh, entered into some uh, understandings and they have got locked themselves in and maybe it's the next review is in a year's time hmm. so they have some time they have they have they have a, they have a breathing space hmm. so within this breathing space the government brings in the PTA back in hmm. so I think that's 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 what's happening hmm. right so uh, and 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 that is problematic that is problematic as far as citizens of this country are concerned because is your is your is 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 are the laws such draconian laws going to be dependent on uh, foreign trade negotiations hmm. right shouldn't the government government be more receptive to what the people uh, want to say and have to say about these laws and i think i'm very grateful uh, that uh, for Mr. Javid Yusuf for coming out with that and asking that very important question do we need a terrorism law and that's that's the most important question we need to ask I mean as lawyers I think we have four lawyers here we will all agree that we can agree on murder we can agree on theft we can agree on robbery what are the uh, what are the elements of robbery what are the elements of theft what are the elements of murder what are the elements of ter terrorism can the four of us agree nobody can agree mm -hmm. Which is precisely why a law, uh, a law based on terrorism, is very problematic, very problematic, and that is what and that is what leads to abuse. Now, like like you said, uh, a person accompanying 
his father giving sound equipment. That's because there is no definition of terrorism. Mm. Anything can be made terrorism. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney at Law Hijaz Hezbollah. Now, uh, we'll, we of course, open the floor for questions from our journalist. Um, we've got with us Niresh Eliathambi. Niresh, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Sharlan. So, uh, we were talking about the definitions and uh, the difficulty of defining what terrorism is. So, I quickly looked up uh, what uh, the Oxford Dictionary says, and it says, the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against mm -hmm. civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. And if you look at the other uh, dictionaries, you have similar definitions, if not the same. Nowhere does it say anything about selling cakes, Shalan, or uh, so, you know, using sound equipment. Mm. Uh, so it's very clear that uh, what happened uh, recently is a clear abuse of the PTA uh, by the police and whatever other authorities. So, uh, isn't it very easy, um, and let me ask Mr. Uar De Silva, uh, who after all is a very respected uh, guest on our show and uh, uh, an extremely well respected, um, advisor to the Ministry of Justice. Is it not possible to simply uh, order for the Attorney General or the Minister to give an order saying that these arrests are not to be under PTA? Perfectly right. Because uh, now it was happening uh, last few years uh, all in all uh, uh, Poison Opium Dangerous Act when they arrest a person for drug cases, they put PTA <laughs> and then thereafter he will be there in remand or uh, detention. So because of that, the Honourable <coughs> General called the IG and given specific instruction, if you are dealing with Poisons Opium Act, don't take PTA into your hand. So that's how they, get, they have given a special circular, thereafter they didn't do it. Though they introduce um, uh, heroin is a different matter, but they have not arrested them under PTA. So because I say, now this is also same. Now, can you remember the Ramsey's case, so, uh, far case, and then uh, Natasha, the serious matter. Mm -hmm. In all these cases, the court has specifically stated that these people had abused the law. That does not mean we have to abolish the law. I personally feel and I say that we must need some sort of legislation to uh, combat terrorism. That's for sure. Because we can't say that we have penal code and then uh, other laws also there. No, you can't do that. So there, are, there should be specific law where it should be defined and then put it into force. Peep the so, but I think I think the issue that um, Attorney Law Hijaz his bulla raised was the fact that you can't really agree on a definition. No, that is, that in all the countries it is there. So that does not mean we have to abolish the law. So if but somebody can now, I learned the, the he said that definition is there. It is included in the PTA uh, ATA uh, paragraphs. It is included. It is not that. But Specific. there are other things. It's wide. Huh? Sorry. It's, it's wider. It's wider, wider. 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 <laughs> but no, wider. Still, I'm correct. still not yeah, including that, cakes. That definition was there, at least to some extent, it's acceptable. <laughs> I think. But violence for a political aim. Hmm. So. Here, there is no violence. There is no the, the political aim element is not there in the current uh, ATA. But I am saying is you you can defi define in that way. But uh, authorities should know, as you said. Now they should know uh, bringing a cake does not come in under PTA and they should not arrest the person under that. It is very easy for them to do that and say uh, this is terrorism. So that is of course it's a different issue and the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal everywhere it has been established that the police are using for their uh, pressure that not the, <coughs> not to uh, do it properly. So that does not mean, I personally say that this does not mean that we have to abolish that. We have to define it and then carefully draft it and then put. Now, for detention orders, earlier it was not there, now it has come down to two months. 
So when a person is suspicion of terrorism is taken into custody, a detention order should be there to investigate. But Mr. De Silva, the issue I think at hand right now, I mean, we can sit here and discuss about legal principles and, 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 and well, legal jargon, of course. Uh, but the issue at hand is for, for a member of the general public <coughs> is that it's not that the PTA is being misused, it's that it's being misused so hilariously to a point where terrorism is now a joke. Because if a person sees breaking news, such and such a person has been arrested under the PTA, they know for a fact that that person is not a terrorist. Like, for, for me at least. How can you say that they know that when, not when a was the, when was the When was the last time, I mean, <coughs> Silva, the PTA is so important, so necessary, when was the last time that a person who actually was uh, a terrorist or who has actually been convicted of terrorism being arrested under the PTA. When was the last time? There are a number of cases. When now, was while the last? are talking one or two isolated cases. Isolated because, cases? Yes, yes. Because if you go to Rehman and the convicted people are there, the, the courts have gone into these matters mm. and then they convicted. It, it was not published. So because mm. of that, we can't say that all people were uh, um, uh, sent, uh, freed. No, it is not correct. There are instances this law had been abused. I personally agreed on that. But that does not mean the law should not be there uh, mm. to do whatever they want. You can't control a terrorist because they are coming out with various methods. So we have to adjust ourselves. And they, we, we don't have um, um, eyewitnesses to uh, go ahead. So that is why they want to investigate these matters under detention orders. Now it has been given two months. Thereafter, if they want, they can produce him to the magistrate and get an extent hmm. Yeah, yeah, hmm. if they want. And the magistrate, of course, has the power. Now we all talk, uh, give magistrate the authority. So they have given the magistrate to, if they want to extend, they have to go and then ask for the magistrate. Then magistrate will go through it and see whether it is proper or not. And the lawyer can go into that. And lawyer can visit and he just his full last offered. That is why I say they, 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 the PTA, that, 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 uh, that article was not there. there. The section <coughs> was not there. Now it is clearly stated hmm. that lawyer can visit and the uh, Human Rights Commission at any time without informing them. Hmm. They can go and see whether that person is safely there hmm. and the magistrate should visit. It's a mandatory requirement. And then thereafter, if there is a complaint, the magistrate can change the place as mm. well. So those matters, people are not talking. And we should inform the people, mm. these are the things that are there inside the uh, ATA Act mm. uh, or the bill. Mm. So if that is there, if a terrorist or suspicious person has been taken into custody, the authority should be given Genuinely, if they are doing, they should be given opportunity to investigate properly. Otherwise, we can't tolerate that. We can't, we can't uh, eradicate the terrorism. That is why I say it is very important. The PT, of course, we have the experience hmm. how the draconian law suffered. But we, if we are going to change it, hmm. then allow them to do that. And then what are the problems you have? But, but another, another issue is now... Yeah. now we all agree that the PTA is draconian, the PTA is dangerous, and the PTA is so open to abuse. Now, when it comes to replacing the PTA, we all have two options. One, we could repeal the PTA and discuss amongst ourselves, amongst stakeholders, yeah, and decide on, decide on what the replacement ATA. is. <laughs> or, we can keep the PTA in force and try to find an alternative to it. But the issue really comes in the fact that although the PTA is, everybody agrees that it's bad, it's been misused, it's still being used. Mm. Why is it? It has been not changed or amended. So, not yes, there, exactly. There. But, but if, if, the government, if the government gives an assurance that it won't be used to the international community or whoever, and it's still being used while the government is trying to you know, find a replacement, a suitable replacement for it, and it's being used so hilariously, uh, to the fact that a person who cracks a joke is arrested. 
a person who writes something that is obviously that is obviously that is under uh, ICCPR, ICCPR not the PD uh, that was that was the ICCPR so there is there are more pieces so, of legislation so that's a time we, we have so, so many direct you mean to say that we have to abolish, abolish the uh, ICCPR no uh, how how would you respond to that message <laughs> can you give me the question again <laughs> so uh, the, the point being you propose that we don't need the PTA uh, and Mr. Ewar De Silva is of the opinion that we need anti-terrorism legislation in Sri Lanka because there have been successful cases where terrorists have been convicted. Where so until we bring the amendment, what do we do? I exactly right. in the interim. Right. So one, absolutely, Charlene, you're absolutely correct. Right. So if you, if we, if we have accepted and there is so much of data that PTA is being abused, right? Uh, Mr. De Silva spoke about uh, convictions. Very important thing, I think we should, we should be looking at the conviction rate. How many people arrested? How many people in detention? That's correct. How many people acquitted? <coughs> how many people acquitted? How many people convicted? How, 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 how many people convicted? And the most important point is how long <coughs> were they in detention before acquittal? I was in a ward with PTA detainees, and I'll just share just one story about the small man. 17 years, a, a man went and dropped his daughter in grade 1 in school, took the bus from Kilinochi and, land, and got off at Vaunia. He went to meet a person and then he was arrested. He, he went home 17 years later. On the 17th year, at the end of his High Court trial, he gave evidence and he stood on the witness box and he was speaking to the judge, I mean he was giving evidence to the judge. Halfway through the evidence, he broke down crying when he narrated his story. It was a complete case of mistaken identity. And the judge was stunned to hear this story. And the judge asked him, why didn't you tell this before? And Mr. De Silva and all, since we are all lawyers, we will know. He asked him, when did I get the chance? When, as a PTA detainee, when do you actually get the chance of telling the judge, this is what happened to me? You never get the chance. So at the end of 17 years, he was acquitted. He went home to give his daughter in marriage. To give his daughter in marriage. That, now those are the statistics we also <coughs> need. Now, to answer your question, Shalan, if we know that this law is being abused, then I think we need to impose a moratorium on it. Hmm. That's number one. Number two, we need to identify, and that's part of all this data, is identify how this law is being abused. What are the loopholes and how they creep in? Hmm. Right? And then also ask the next question is, do we actually need these laws? So, right? so and then come up with whatever law that we are coming up. And also in this question about the law is good, the police is violating it. I think that's and we have the government says we have made a good law, the police is uh, is abusing it. That's not right. The police is part of the lawmaking process. <coughs> we saw this in the ATA. Some of the some of the lawyers who appeared did not sign off on the final document. Why? Because they could not agree to it. Hmm. This was not the draft that they prepared. So, so it's not a case of uh, it's not a case of uh, the government is good and then some some uh, some uh, officer down the ranks is uh, violating the law. And also, I want to talk about a very good judgment and pay tribute to the Supreme Court, especially Justice Jasanta Kodagoda in Muhammad Ram, Razik Muhammad Ramzi hmm. versus Seniviratna, which is an excellent judgment. And these are, I mean, so the pushback from the judiciary and we should welcome that judgment of Justice Kodagoda <coughs> on the ICCPR and I think if this judgment had come slightly before uh, when I think some of those other famous uh, the comedians uh, case uh, Natasha's case but I think still there was another arrest <laughs> yeah so I think but this judgment which I think came out very recently gives very strong guidelines uh, this came on the 14th of November hmm. right it's very strong guidelines as to how the law is and what is freedom of expression, uh, the, 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 the power of arrest and also talks about how the law, uh, the, the process becomes the punishment. And, and Shalan about this whole thing <coughs> about, uh, we are using the word draconian, I think the real issue in Sri Lanka is 
the double standards that is why it become it's 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 hilarious and hurtful also hmm. is that some people are privileged and the law never applies to them but the law applies in full force <coughs> for some others and that's the real problem that we have if the law applies across the board for everybody equally then i think there is some degree of the the the, the some consolation some consolation it's not so such an unkind uh, cut hmm. but here it's very hurtful when somebody you know, for example we had janasara tero every wednesday every wednesday there'll be press briefing he'll be there slandering islam smashing the muslims and that will be prime time on all the channels i don't think sirs are carried it but i think some of the other channels carried it prime time every day it's it's every wednesday the press briefing is given full coverage and and uh, so much of facebook uh, hate and all that but here we had ramzi writing one facebook post and a very important fact that the supreme court unearths in this judgment is that the arrest complaint came from the ministry of defense why is the ministry of defense getting involved in these things now and and uh, sending the sending a complaint to the cid Mr. so these Dishilva. are the things that we need to look at mr mm. dishilwa uh, now there appears to be uh, this uh, dichotomy where there's the government and the police but in actual fact the reality is that the government controls the police um, and igp has gone on record as saying uh, saying that uh, what is it shalan 85 or 90% <coughs> of oic's hmm. were politically appointed oh, my and, and 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 that that means not politically appointed by the opposition it's politically appointed by the ruling party so the government whichever ruling party it is clearly controls the police and therefore the government can very clearly give the instructions as to uh, the, the way the law are, are not doing that's what we say the the government should have the control otherwise merely because the law is there that does not mean we can get the benefit they should the, otherwise they should come forward and say don't do these things and supreme court has decided now the, in this particular judgment supreme court has given instruction you have done a wrong thing <coughs> you should be punished for that purpose and then the other matters also in number of cases under normal law also the chief justices have given specific instruction to the authorities that they have violated fundamental right so that is there but fact remains the police are not doing and then the politicians are involved and they want to have it in their, their way that is how it goes now it is very easy to say when we come over we will do this and that they they have been doing it no so this is not the first time so from 1979 pta act was there nobody interested in uh, pollution that or change it but the uh, un they are when we they, when they went to un con uh, conference they not only they gave an assurance 2015 <coughs> they came and then started drafting anti terrorism act and to, to, till 2019 they were doing it they are not serious about it. then only this anti terrorism uh, act came into operation that does not mean that uh, ha, ha, suddenly they uh, prepared it and put forward they if they want to go to geneva they have to have some sort of solution so i my personal view is that in if you go we are we are looking only first two paragraphs but if you go into that the magistrate has the power to uh, as he said the person who has been detention or arrested can explain what that could happen the magistrate is there now so earlier it was not there and bail also being considered in this particular matter uh, the, the ata it has been com considered only thing is whether that is also can be misused hmm. it, it it will do it the the police will do it that's for sure because so the court says Mr. mr silva is is there any is there any possibility i'm i'm just trying to pick your brain on this matter is there any possibility for any sort of uh, because usually uh, people respond uh, to repercussions if there is an action there is a reaction and and if there is some consequence to the actions of police officers or whoever officers are entrusted with uh, using this very powerful piece of legislation uh, that could also be used as a deterrent uh, uh, the issue being that people are being arrested for 
you know, completely unrelated reasons, reasons that are unrelated to terrorism. And uh, even, I believe, in, in, in Ramzi Razik's matter, uh, the police officers who were involved in his arrest were only ordered to pay 30,000 rupees. And I don't think that's even minimum wage in Sri Lanka, or at least a person below the poverty line. So, would, would a measure on the part of the government at least to maybe suspend these police officers who are using it wrongly or to, to demote them, to, to, to take some positive action to show good faith on the part of the government, do you think that, that, would, that would at least go some way? It certainly should be. But how are they going to do it? Because they are thinking that they, he will help for me to uh, go to election and get the election uh, uh, results clear because they are helping. So that is why they are not taking any action. Though the Supreme Court has stated and given a lot of uh, guidelines, they are not going to adhere to it. When you say they, who, who do you mean? Police? The politi politician, the, the authorities and the government. Totally, if you consider it in total way, the government. Government is not going to take serious action against those police officers. That is the main issue. In fact, in Shalan, there have been instances, uh, perhaps not recently, where uh, police officers convicted of FR violations have then been promoted. 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 Uh, but let me ask Mr. Mr. No, we we'll, 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 So I think the government should look into that. Simply saying that uh, police officers are not taking. Now, Supreme Court FR is <laughs> not a penal method. Hmm. What they want is compensation. Hmm. So, like you say, what you brought in was a very good amendment. If you can bring in penal amendments against police officers who act in this way, then there is no way that politicians can take use of them. Hmm. Because the very second they do something and they get convicted FR, there is no way that they can come and put their hands in an in an FR matter. Hmm. That's going to proceed, hmm. whether you like it or not. Whether the department is involved with the politician or not, I will not go that far, but although the FR matter will go for. Hmm. So if you can bring in that what you are saying is superb, hmm. but then when you go and say that there is involvement, that is very serious, so that is why these acts should not prevail. So the Patriot Act in US came only in 2001, hmm. when they had the issue. Ours came in 79 when we had the issue. Hmm. So we are said to have won the war in 2009, hmm. and now we are still arguing on terrorism and rights, so they are used to bombing. I don't know whether we identify the terrorists, hmm. uh, the form HE and uh, police officers were found uh, to be at fault in the FR. Hmm. The high court matters are still going on. So those are also, as far as I know, I don't know whether how the proceedings will go on. I don't want to touch on that. But uh, as far as I know, <coughs> there is not a single person who identified a terrorist hmm. under the PTA. Hmm. Who's there? But we had the Easter bombings. <laughs> we had full investigations. Hmm. So, what is the point of the act? Just because you detain a person. So, that's why you have remand custody also. Hmm. Maybe they get involved and all that. So, at that time also, you still have the police come in, taking them for investigations and all that is happening. Just because you, the word, their detention kept in a corner place or whether you are put into remand custody in an open prison, that's a different story. Hmm. So, that doesn't separate how a person might react to whether he'll give the information or not. Now, Actual detention order, but then that's why you say you should stop torture. Hmm. Because that's where it comes in. You are kept in detention, then you don't get the information, then comes in torture and like that, like that. Then you have <coughs> the use of power and all that. <coughs> now, when you make allegations, the politicians are involved, then it has to be stopped definitely. Hmm. Before bringing in that, you have to begin procedure and guidelines or even laws, acts, to uh, distance the politicals from the police if they are giving instructions over the phone. Hmm. So, if the police are also that uh, dumbfounded, if I may say, now like you said, arresting for cakes and all this, that. So, what is the use of the police? Hmm. Police is there to protect the people. Law is there to protect the people. The law is turned around. People are arrested saying that they are terrorists. So, the law is not helping the people. The police is not helping the people. The government is saying, right, I don't know the police is doing all this. Uh, we don't know what to do. So, then I don't know who, who knows what's happening in the country. Because it's not safe. Hmm. If laws are to protect, the police have to be trained. Hmm. You can't bring in laws and then turn around and say, no, it's the police. Then halfway through say, yeah, maybe politicians are also involved. No. You have to bring strict laws with a view. You can't bring in laws 
to just see how it goes. Because you take into person into detention and all that, the magistrate has a duty to come and see, true. Hmm. But after that person dies in detention, what's the point <coughs> of coming and seeing the body? So, so Tivanka, uh, if there is a change in the ruling party with uh, the elections next yes. year, uh, how soon could we expect uh, as soon as possible, be because we don't. Well, oh, that that sounds very ambiguous. <coughs> no, because can I, can, have, I can't. Can give, I can't a, give you a date, yes, deadline. We, we, because how how soon would you like to see it? Within like to one see it is so there's a temporary oh. provision. Yes. We have to sign to bring it into power for year by year. We won't sign it. That's all. We, when we have to sign it, we won't sign it. Because we don't need the PTA to put down the opposition. By social censor letter in 2022 saying. Uh, protesters are arrested under PTA to the government to stop it, the Bar Association. Hmm. We all are members of that. Hmm. They say that. They recognize, say the executive <coughs> as a unfettered power there. This is draconian law. Don't arrest people under this. Who are those protesters? They are citizens. They are not terrorists. Hmm. Can't the police identify that? Can't the government instruct the police? Hmm. They can instruct on everything. They can send complaints. But they can't instruct, no, don't arrest. Hmm. Uh, no, that's the police. So if the police is behave, misbehaving and taking the law to their hands, the government should know to take control and bring in laws. Hmm. If the politicals are misbehaving, the government also has to know hmm. to, uh, to control that and bring them before the court. Because this is not a joke. Hmm. Now like uh, my dad Bahija said, 17 years is not a joke for a person's life. Hmm. It's quite easy to come and say, you know, right, we investigated, now it's admitted. <coughs> like he said, the most important fact is, we have to see how, how long they were in detention, how long investigations carried on. So investigations must carry on very fast, especially when a person is in detention. Hmm. Because it's their life we are talking about. So turn it around and you can play the blame card. Opposition, government, police and all. But end of the day, at this point of the time, all this time we've been talking about all these cases, we know who were arrested, were those terrorists. Hmm. So this is the PTA. And the self-confessed terrorists are in cabinet. <laughs> you have to understand, you should, when you bring in laws, you have to be extremely careful. The VTA. And that's the whole double standard concept. Now that's when you say, when you have foreign uh, countries using, that's the thing with the Patriot. It came up when they had an issue. Hmm. But they don't do now, when the capital was overrun, during Trump's time, they didn't use the Patriot Act. And put those people on the Gontron Bay and all, you know. There is, there is, there is a limit where you, you use the law. Hmm. So, terrorism, I understand it cannot be defined, that is an accepted norm. Mm. But then again, when you say prevention of terrorism, and when you start arresting people <laughs> on the road, and if the police officer don't have the basic sense to understand that, what is the ministry doing? What is the government doing? You can't turn around and say, what were they doing in 2015? They were in the 2015, uh, the counter terrorism bill was brought. Mm. The counter terrorism bill, bill was brought. Right. That was there in 2015. Mm. That was that also had a big uproar mm. by the public. Mm. Now it's the same president. Prime Minister, President, same person. Mm. So what, uh, what we believe is the ATA. Who, who was there in the cabinet? What were they doing? It so, is very easy. Now to the ball is passed. And we when we come over, we will do everything. We will show everything to the country. But it is not correct. You all these politicians are responsible. When they are in power, oh. they just keep passing that. And they give over they are to the Geneva and say we will definitely do. As my letter friend said, that they assured and they came and thereafter they prepared a draft. Who are they? It's so-called SGB. Only one person is now there as the president. <laughs> they, 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 so I think I, I think the question there, Mr. De Silva, is now the SJB, formerly the majority faction of the UNP. Now they are thinking UNP now, now now the SJB is saying we don't need any anti-terrorism legislation, including the PTA. But in 2015, the notion was no, we need anti-terrorism legislation, just not the PTA. So has has that changed? Yeah, quite truly, because... It has changed. Are, what you have to understand is, there is quite a difference in the two parties. With the UMP and the SJB? Yeah, because it's easy to say it's the same faction, but to understand, the top in the UMP is still there. Hmm. The main part, the main stakeholders have not crossed over the SJB, except for the deputy leader, who had no power at that time. Hmm. Who were not given power. You are not given power, you are not given prominence, you are not given a chance. You can say, yes, yes, he was allowed to run for the election the last moment with a month. 
we have Mr. Gota Bhai Rajapaksa running for over a month at that time, his whole campaign. Hmm. That is why the party came out. So the, if you see the faction who has come out, you know they are the the the, the uh, small crowd and a few top of ministers, but those were not the people who were taking the decisions. Hmm. People who are taking decisions are still there in the UMP. Hmm. They are still fighting for government within the uh, two party government. That is not our problem. So when you can easily turn around and say, what to our ministries? We have the opposite, what to our ministries? Where we in so much of power? No. So quite simply, and even at that time, the present president couldn't hold his uh, position. They have the 52-day government, they have, it was a tussle for power. No, nobody cared about this. But even during that time, the counter-terrorism bill came about. Hmm. Now this is coming about, but at that time, what uh, you should understand is the country was stable. Hmm. You had time to focus on this, on separating. That's not what you are saying. It's all right, you trying to, uh, if you want to remove this, we'll agree. But there's a time to focus on everything. Now from March to September, you keep on going on this. What have you done to stabilize the rest? Hmm. Now, now, Tivaka, you uh, you brought up an interesting uh, uh, point: the 52-day government. Yes. Uh, and uh, then I looked once again at the definition of terrorism, and we all saw what happened in Parliament, uh, with uh, with uh, chairs being thrown at the speaker Spices. and sp <laughs> various yes, the free advertising campaign for spices. Yes, but. Uh, when you go back to the definition, uh, the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, True. especially against civilians, yeah. in the pursuit of political aims. Yeah. So, why were none of them arrested under PTA? Quite true. Um, just because they are parliamentarians and they did it in parliament, um, nothing happens. So, the PTA so clearly is, a, is wrongly used and it, it therefore becomes a bad law if it is used only uh, mainly for these wrong purposes. Just thinking aloud, thinking out loud, if you use that uh, definition, even at this moment, then the government becomes terrorist. The second you use this act to subjugate the opposition, that means it's against the political will, the government becomes terrorist. According to that uh, same definition. Well, in that case, if the, the if the government can uh, the be defined as, as terrorists, then uh, under the <laughs> then the PTA certainly has uh, uh, a lot of problems. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to pose one question to uh, Attorney Lord Javid Yusuf. Now we keep on, you know, focusing our attention on the executive. The executive is wrong for using these powers that have been vested with them. But Parliament also has, of course, a duty because the larger uh, representation of the general public is seen in Parliament. Because if you take a president, you know, 51% of people would vote for one person, 49% would vote for someone else. Uh, but in parliament, you get true representation of the people. More people are represented in parliament. So there are checks and balances that have been put even uh, speaking on the responsibility of the police department and the control of the police department uh, by our elected representatives. That too is maintained <coughs> in parliament. Uh, through, through the Constitutional Council. Now, with the unfolding or the, or the incidents that took place recently and uh, the delay in appointing of a new IGP, uh, still there is no permanent IGP, it's only an acting IGP position. Do you think there's something wrong with the process uh, that Parliament is being used as a check and balance on the executive or is it just, uh, again, abuse? No, I think uh, the simple position is that after uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksa abdicated his office and the new president came in, the new president had to deal with economic issues basically. Hmm. The country has gone bankrupt and he had to deal with that. Now in the process of dealing with all that, these other issues, he is unable to move. Hmm. Now you can see, <coughs> the when you don't appoint, you, you keep uh, giving extensions to the incumbent oh, IGP without appointing somebody uh, to New. fill the vacancy. It's a clear, there is a reason. You, you are unable to take that next step. And now finally when the next step was taken also, the IGP uh, has been appointed only as acting IGP. And now I saw in the paper, I don't know if the cabinet has finally decided, 
that they are going to bring a restriction that any IGP okay. will have be there for only for three years. Hmm. So the, it shows that the government is dysfunctional, governance is dysfunctional. So that is why this whole position is. I personally believe now is the time for elections. You have to get a new mandate. Hmm. That only can uh, uh, empower government, energize government. Hmm. Because you have to present a program to the people and then uh, uh, get a mandate and then go ahead. But now what has happened is, it is not clear because the SLPP says the president is there to implement our policies. Of course, the president doesn't say anything, he does his own thing. So that's fine. But the point is for the country to move forward, you have to have elections and test the people. And you can't take policy measures without consulting the people. No, that's democracy. That's why you have to present a manifesto and uh, uh, you know get a mandate. But uh, just leaving that alone for the moment, I want to take uh, refer to what uh, he just said about that guy for 17 years. Now that is a clear example of the injustice <coughs> that this whole. Um, system of these uh, draconian laws results on the citizen who is supposed to be sovereign. Now, so take 17 years of uh, uh, any person's life that is lost. He uh, he's married, no? That guy. Yeah, he married. Yeah. He, had a, he had a child. So, 17 years the child did not have a father. Who is accountable for this? And it is not enough to say the law is good, but it is the police who are bad. Well, if the police are bad, the buck stops with the person who is in charge of the police or the authorities. Can a minister come and say, you know, it is the, we had a good policy, but the official has, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, blundered or not done what is necessary. That's the argument that's been yeah. made though. Yeah, if that happens, the minister, if he doesn't take action, I think the Supreme Court, uh, like uh, uh, he just said, you know, Justice Koda Goda has given that judgment, like that the courts will give judgment. Now, even in the uh, case of, uh, the uh, against the former president, the case is about who is responsible for the economic crisis, the court in its judgment has said, uh, because there are arguments you know, that you know, it was the previous government mm -hmm. which uh, created the crisis and so on. The court has clearly said, at the time you took over, you knew what the situation was. Mm -hmm. So you are responsible to correct it, right? So now the police, if they are doing misusing, then it's up to the uh, authorities to correct them, uh, train them. It is like giving a gun to somebody and then who's untrained how to use it, he shoots somebody and say, well, he, did, he misused it. That is not the point. But leaving all that alone, my, I come back to the same argument that terrorism has to be dealt with. There is no two words about that. But terrorism is really a, uh, a me way of uh, advancing uh, particular causes. That's where that... Uh, uh, about political objective, that right? Particular yeah. definition, yes. There are various ways you, know, you can advance political cause. You can negotiate, you can demand, you can uh, canvas, you write petitions and so on. But the extreme one is where you use violence, it becomes terrorism. But the best way to do away with terrorism or not let the conditions for terrorism to exist is to have a contented people. You address them, and if a government is shown to be a caring government, even if they don't are unable to deliver because of other circumstances, people won't be, uh, what do you call, uh, resentful. You should not create resentment in the mind. A contented people who know that they have a caring government will never be pushed to terrorism. Terrorism arises when, uh, you know, interested mischief makers go and exploit a suitable condition. So there are various ways. We should not have this phobia. Now next year there might be a terrorist attack, so there will be also have this act.
you know so because basically and the other point is constitution has laid down various guidelines about the free uh, fundamental rights directives of state policy and all that is the duty of the state and the government to implement it in where in some situation uh, some uh, uh, mistake is made or an excess is committed then the courts will adjudicate and grant justice mm -hmm. but if the courts are there to adjudicate you can't say uh, no no let the injustice be committed the courts will do the needful that is not the that is not what the courts are there for courts will do justice that is their duty and that is how it should be but it's a duty of the state incumbent on the state to fulfill all the obligations that are placed in the constitution for the state now for the for instance directives of state policy are not justiciable you cannot enforce it but that gives the 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 what do you call the the line or the guidance for government to act the fundamental principles principles the, the uh, government's actions must be informed by those policies so in uh, to cut a long story short my view is terrorism you don't need this act you don't need terrorism act but if you look after the people hmm. by and large people will be happy even human if they rights, are suffering no? human rights rule of law democracy and justice and justice uh, yeah. independence of the judiciary if you focus on those four i think you you've got it right because what's the role of the attorney general here we've been talking about police being controlled by <coughs> politicians and uh, corrupt politicians uh, uh, politicians and governments terrorizing the people but and and of course the courts but what about the attorney general is the ag's department so weak that it can't stand up <coughs> and uh, enforce what then what they know about the law and they are after all lawyers members of the bar association i think the role of the attorney general is has become very problematic uh it has become problematic <coughs> particularly <coughs> since the department lost its independence uh i was in the attorney general department a former member of the attorney general department and i would say i was uh uh I, i i saw the beginning of the end beginning of the end of it losing its independence we were we were officers uh, who would handle files and we would get calls from politicians and we would completely reject those and and say no to them to their faces and do what we thought was right but i don't know whether that happens now no now now how is it problematic a number 1 uh police officer uh, sorry the attorney general's department is the lawyer of the police department mm. counsel to the state counsel to the state so they represent police officers uh, in court in prosecutions so the cid is represented by uh, the the by a state counsel mm. that same cid officer makes a wrongful arrest it's the same attorney general that a state counsel who will go and uh prosecute no no who will also defend his fundament the fundamental rights mm. application it's the same attorney general if that particular officer has committed torture and needs to be prosecuted or the question of whether he needs to be prosecuted will also be decided by the same group of uh, attorney general's department officials it's the same attorney general's department officials who will also advise the government on law reform who will also give opinions on bills who will also appear before the supreme court on fundamental rights applications uh, on special determinations with regard to bills mm. so it's this same group of people who play all these roles they're supposed to prosecute on behalf of the public defend police officers advise the government advise the policy of the uh, sorry advise on government policy and also defend that policy there's too much happening there there's too much happening there and and there is a serious inability for those officers and and the attorney general to be truly independent truly independent of the government and its and, and the government officials
and that's a that's a that's a serious problem that needs to be examined i think there needs to be some sort of uh, reform hmm. where the prosecutorial arm has to be taken out so there has to be a, a, a group of lawyers who advise the government who defend the government but there must be another group of lawyers who prosecute so that they make their decisions on their own an independent prosecutor's office independent prosecutor's office DPP. Now, now now we've heard this uh, th this term but one small thing uh, i'm also from prosecutor state council department now the thing is when you take matters like such as the pta it now it's so large and there is no way that you have all the information either the ag has to be empowered hmm. if you make a arrest under the pta you have to send it to the attention hmm. then the ag is aware now when you start to point the finger and always say no what is the ag doing the thing is now like you said the cake i did not know about it so i could have been officer of the attorney but i could have been the attorney himself and not know, known about it so the thing is you have to empower in a way hmm. before you like point the finger that's why because i was also there it's easy to say but it's so different. and the other thing is you have a such a less crowd hmm. so the mass the intro of, of files the cases and cases and why that's why i'm saying so i did a matter where under the penal code there is uh, inciting against the government this is ananda palita who's a section 120 exactly 120 inciting against the government it's none other than ananda palita one of prominent trade union uh, <coughs> persons hmm. when he said the fuel crisis will come Hmm. Arrested, put one week, stagnant. It hits. Hmm. Now what happens? Now the police can't come and say anything hmm. because why? Yes, there is a crisis. Hmm. They can't even come to court. Hmm. They keep on putting further reports. After a few months, they say no, we are sending the file to the department. Because now you have to wash your hands. <laughs> now you came and arrested and then, him. And then it, and then it stacks at the department for about four years. Now it stacks. <laughs> after about one year, AG said bye. <laughs> after about one year, AG says no. You, there is no evidence, hmm. it's, there is no incitement because there are certain indicators. So, by and large, the uh, decision is we are by by. And it's true, it's, it's a fair decision. It did hmm. take time, but then again, you know, there should be some sort of, uh, you know, a process. Then again, if AG is to be involved, either put into every court or whatever, or a special unit or whatever, and then have these matters reported. Hmm. Well, so, otherwise, so if a man can be arrested, for foretelling the future, rightly or wrongly, then all the astrologers in the country should be arrested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also on this Attorney General's uh, the, uh, issue, I want to make another point is that now, whilst they play all these multiple roles, their promotions are also decided by the government. And it's not, it's not a secret that, that the seniors, officers of the Attorney General's department are looking for appointments in the higher judiciary. They're looking for appointments in the higher judiciary and those appointments are, are to be made uh, on recommendations of the government to the constitutional council. That sounds like corruption. So, 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 so they need to be, so they need to be in have to, to 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 be to be or to be to be holding certain types of views taking certain prosecutorial decisions and to be of a of a particular leaning if you are to get those recommendations and get your name on that list on that list now we had the question of the igps there's only one name being sent for the constitutional council to approve now over and over again over and over again now, if you want to be that only one name in that, then you have to have a certain issue, certain certain position that you take on important matters. These are the problems with the Attorney General's Department, and that is also the problem with the Police Department. Hmm. <coughs> the larger, larger issue of the AG, uh, Attorney General's Department also is linked to this whole institutional decay that we have seen in the last possibly three decades or so, where the AG, Aegis Department, the police and so on, their sense of working and independence is affected. Now, it's not only the um, uh, officials in the department of the police or the Aegis Department, but it also relates to the politicians. How they are prepared to accept, you know, it's very unfortunate. Now, earlier, I'm not sure when this changed, maybe after 78, there was a time when the Attorney General, 
whose advice the government would seek. If a minister wanted, he goes to the Attorney General's office. The AG doesn't go to the minister's office. That was the level of independence that the AG had. And if the AG gave a particular verdict, the minister may not have been uh, advised. Minister would have been unhappy, but still he would accept because that was the environment. But now, you the even any official who is inclined to do so will be reluctant. As he just said, you know, they have to maneuver themselves into certain positions. But of course, there are still. Uh, some people who will say, okay, I'm not going to do all this, I'm leaving and so on. Hmm. So that brings us to that large issue. And of course, I, th I think we uh, time has come now definitely to re reinstall the director of public, public prosecution. It was there earlier under the Administration of Justice Act. Uh, director of public prosecutions was there. We need to have that because it will... Uh, resolve many of the problems that we are having with regard to the administration of justice. Thank you very much, Attorney Lord Javid Yusuf. We have to start our closing statements because uh, time is running short. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, Attorney at Law Hijaz Hezbollah. We spoke a lot about the PTA. We spoke a lot about the ICCPR and, of course, uh, the implementations <coughs> of these laws, uh, the fallbacks uh, of them, the loopholes that we have to try and work through. Uh, your position has constantly been that Sri Lanka does not need an anti-terrorism law. We don't need special laws uh, to run throughout uh, the period because we have, uh, of course, the public securities ordinance and measures like that during the time of an emergency. Um, my final question to you, if you can address maybe in your closing statement is, do you really think that the PTA will be out uh, soon or at least, let's say, during your lifetime? I doubt it. I doubt it for the simple reason. Well, I hope so. I hope so, but I'm skeptical. Uh, and I say this, and, and that's a question you posed uh, my friend here, Mr. Artigala. And you, it's a, I think it's an unfair question also to say, how long will it take? How soon is it? <laughs> and, and his answer is obviously it's not easy. It, because Sri Lanka is a society that has had a 30 year war. Hmm. Uh, the politics of divide, of uh, racism, of fear-mongering is not over. Come, come, uh, I, mean, I mean, if you see certain things appearing in the media, people will ask, when is the election? Mm -hmm. When you start people targeting minorities and start saying things about Muslims and Tamils and all of that, people ask, when is the next election? <laughs> it's so obvious. It's so obvious. When is the next, something is coming up. So. We need to, uh, we need to, uh, we need to work on those things. We as a country need to, need to, need to, we need to overcome those challenges. <coughs> and when we overcome those challenges, we will maybe be, maybe we be scared of the other less, and maybe really see each other for whom we are, right? And also, as Mr. Javid Yusuf said. Focus on, 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 on a content society in the sense, and, and for me, as what I identify, independence of the judiciary, democracy, rule of law, and human rights. Focus on these things, and I think we, we will come to a situation where there is no need for a law on terrorism. And then maybe once we come to that, maybe there will be a time when we, we won't have the PTA. And also on this public security ordinance issue, we do not have to worry about the public security ordinance and parliamentary supervision for the simple reason is that if there if the threat is real and genuine and serious enough you will get parliamentary support hmm. so you don't have to that's a that's a normal argument that people throw if the threat is real and serious and genuine the supreme court will also uphold those positions if those laws are challenged so do not worry about that you don't need to have a permanent legislation for that. So, uh, to answer your question, uh, Shalan, if I think that uh, if this law will uh, disappear, uh, I hope so. But I remain skeptical for because I do not see any project as a nation, as a nation, as a, as, a, as a country that gets us to a point where we see each other uh, beyond our ethnic identities and language and issues like that. Hmm. Once we do that, then the law will disappear. And I, and I must say, these type of talk shows and the work that you're doing is excellent because you are 
uh, and we have been talking about the AT and all these laws and all these issues and the media needs to play that role. Media supervision is also important and I say this because we also have channels that, 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 that survive on fear mongering. We need, to, we, need to, we need to overcome all that and once we do that, then certainly we will come to a situation where there will be no PTA. There will be no need for a PTA. There will be no need for a PTA. Uh, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll, I'll be very frank, right? I go and talk against the PTA, I talk against uh, the, the, these, these uh, arrests and all that. A few days later, there'll be posts on Facebook and all that. Oh, terrorists is here. Tostava, they are meata, tiena, prashnaya, cannot. But, but, well, that's not going to stop us. But you've already but been accused of it and acquitted. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but that's, but that's the reality in that we live in. But that's, uh, that's, we need to come to, come to a point where people will not, uh, we will not be looking at it like that. Thank you very much, Attorney at Law Hijaz Hizbullah. I now move my attention to Attorney at Law Thivan Kartegala, Assistant Legal Secretary of the Samagi Jana Balavegi and also the organizer for Kalavana. Um, your closing statement on today's discussion. So, quite simply, like uh, it was put to me directly, what our position would be is, it's quite direct. We don't need these acts. Hmm. We don't want to come into hmm. power by force and then put the people down to keep their mouth shut and to remain in power. That's not going to work. That has not worked anywhere in the world. That's not going to work with us and that's not us. Hmm. We ask for fair elections. Hmm. I uh, quite agree with my learner senior Mr. Javid when he said, let's get the people's mandate because that is what we've been striving for from the time this turmoil came up. Let's ask the people, let's ask the people. So it's not that we are sure that we will win. Well, that's usually the that's the usual type. Mm. When it's good for you, you want elections. When it's bad for you, you don't want. Mm. We don't mind. We might not. Somebody else might. That's not a problem. But go for elections. Give the people what they want. Mm. So let's come back to the PTA, ATA, ICCPR, and even online safety. Mm. But our personal view is that this is a kind of a long stage plan. If things come up, if elections are not held, to ensure that there is no Aragalia. Hmm. We have the ATA empowering the police, the military, securing the government, subjugating the people, putting them in detention. They will be full on the roads, they dragged along and put somewhere. We have the online safety bill, stopping all social media, nothing, no information is passed. I am not talking about memes and not these kind of things of Tridris, uh, and all those dirty jokes and all that. But you get, there's a certain amount of information that is uh, that goes up and down. But, the, but that social media. has not been enacted yet. Like. I'm not so not even the ADA. Yes, this is a long-term view. Mm. You know, you, you, when you are, when you want to stay in power, you identify the problems. Mm. Then you have to look into the problems. With so you you still have the fertilizer problem, the agriculture problem, and all that, and you want to have online safety bill for what? Where the UN had said when uh, during the protests that uh, when social media was blocked, that that itself is a breach of freedom of speech of the people. Hmm. That that itself is a violation. So now a bill is brought in. Uh, person to that, where the government can control. This is controlling the people, knowing very well what the future lies. It's not good. So at least by force, to hold it, to keep it in your arms, as long as you can. So that's why. That's our belief. That's why these all these acts are given prominence apart from all others mm. and given a strong push and uh, just being then kept quiet. No, once in a while they come back to try to put a small bill and see. And like uh, even he just said, the bill comes but not to parliament. <laughs> so what, what is the process? It, it comes under the table. Ah, Shal, here. You take this and you do it. But you can't go like that. No, you want to have open forum. Well, let's talk, let's debate and all. So, we all members of the bar. Hmm. The bar association, even I think uh, recently, has said uh, withdraw the bill, the ATA bill. Hmm. They will have to say it. So, 2022, they said the PT was wrong. Uh, now, in 23, they say ATA, no, don't withdraw the bill. So, I think uh, we are members, we stand by that. They take a decision on behalf of the membership so that itself uh, speaks out loud uh, as is right there thank you very much attorney at law uh, thivan kartigal deputy uh, legal secretary of the sjb and organizer of kalavana we now move our attention to attorney at law javid yusuf 
former member of the Constitutional Council. Yeah, uh, finally, uh, for, by way of final remarks, I want to reiterate that I don't believe that there is a need for a uh, act, uh, Prevention of Terrorism Act. But also, I want to say that the Prevention of Terrorism Act is so draconian that it is a low bar to com be compared with. Now, when you say that the ATA has uh, removed the power to uh, convict on confessions hmm. or, and periods of detention, you are comparing with the PTA. Hmm. And the PTA is a very low bar. So you should not compare it with the PTA, really. That is one. The second thing is, uh, uh, I see uh, this repeatedly when a law is being brought, not only these laws, any other laws, uh, uh, ministers and government officials saying you can go to the Supreme Court finally you can go to the Supreme Court and get a determination <coughs> now the Supreme Court doesn't decide whether the law is good or bad in the sense of whether it, the country needs it or not it only determines the constitutionality of it, mm -hmm. it looks at only that narrow aspect, it is not required to look at the larger this thing so if when you are discussing a law or the, or the lead up to the law, you have to discuss whether it's beneficial to the country or not. So if you want to impose VAT, you have to discuss whether it's important or not. If you want to give tax holidays, whether it's important or not, no point saying you can go to the Supreme Court and you can canvass it. You will only canvass the Constitution. So uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Attorney at Law, Javid Yusuf, former member of the Constitutional Council. We of course, come to uh, President's Council, you are De Silva. Of course, uh, fighting a lone man's game. <laughs> Nothing new to you, of course, given your performances in court. Uh, so, President's Counsel, you are De Silva. Uh, you held uh, a drastically different opinion from uh, all the other panelists present here today. Uh, so, you get some extra time for your closing statement. Your time starts now. Charlotte, uh, now it's very easy to criticize once the bill is there. But if they are not coming out, how to improve it? Hmm. Or you can say abolish that. It's very easy to say. Now, Poisons, danger, Opium Dangerous Act, how many people are languishing in remand without any cause? They have been introduced by the, the uh, heroin by the police and they are being kept for years. Now, as a criminal practitioner, I have all the experience hmm. how in a normal murder case, the people take into custody and they have been there languishing in remand. AG's advice, how long they have been there, so they are not talking about the 17 year person, I say it's wrong, but there are in other cases also, under normal law, under Opium Dangerous Act, ultimate result would be they will be acquitted by the Court of Appeal, but they, nobody is helping them. Mm -hmm. And then in the Supreme Court, they have given guidelines, and in various cases, they have stated that police should have taken instructions from the Attorney General's Department. They have not done it. So what are we going to do? Are we going to abolish those laws? Are we going to, uh, because the police are introducing uh, heroin to the people, that is why we don't want uh, poisons, opium, a dangerous act? No, we can't do that. In a country like this, there should be some sort of a, a law to curtail or to eradicate the uh, terrorism. So there may be lacunas, there may be things that should be developed. But if we are not going to help them, so we also, I personally of the view that the confessions are removed, it's a good thing. And my learned friend said, you can't compare. We have to compare it because if we are going to abolish everything and as my learned friend said, no, we don't have a, we don't want any law. We, people can do whatever they want. No, you can't do that. In a country, in a Sri Lankan culture, politicians are involved and people are going behind them. They are talking about election. You mean to say that after the election, all things will be uh, okay and we are happy? No, it's the same thing. We are going to the same pattern. The people who are coming into power will bring more and more 
laws in the parliament. Draconian laws. Draconian laws. So people in Sri Lanka have no hope. No hope because <laughs> because of this politician situation. Because now we we are going to have this election in the same way. Hmm. They are talking about election, but they are not talking to change the system. If we are going to PR system, the same people with different attire will come over there. So what is the what is the difference? The people will forget everything and go behind them when the elections are there. This is Sri Lankan culture. So this type of a culture, you need to have some sort of law. But if we are not going to change our attitudes, and as my friend said, if we are not going to work together, then we are going to go haywire. So, but 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 one, just one question, if I may, if I may interrupt you, uh, President's Council, you are De Silva. Now, um, uh, Mr. Hezbollah, in his uh, closing remarks, said that he believes that there will be a time when there is no need for the PTA. Do you think that there could be a time like that in the future no, where there no, is no, no need? No, I don't think that is there. There should be there because there should be some sort of terrorism law to curtail terrorism. Because we don't know at what time it will come out. In other countries also, they have happily uh, introduced laws with regard to terrorism. Now, they are turned around and say, like my learned friend, they abolish these things. How can they say like that? They are there. Now, New Zealand take into consideration. Now, they, they said that this is the, our country, nothing had happened and nothing, and nothing will happen. But ultimately, what happened? They, are, they have introduced a draconian terrorism law. We are not talking about that. They have not, they are, there are no definition with regard to terrorism. But I think the difference there, Mr. De Silva, is the fact that they don't use it uh, in, in the way that I Sri Lankan am, police I, use I it. I am coming to that point. They are not using that for, to torture people or to have uh, those uh, uh, safe, uh, to, uh, do, uh, to arrest them unnecessarily. But we are. Them. Here it's different. <laughs> that is why I say we have to change our attitudes. Politicians should not interfere, as they said. The Attorney General's department should be given different powers. Because we give all the powers to them. They say advice. We can't give evidence. Uh, advice hmm. uh, at a, uh, uh, when you want, it will take years. So what will happen? People are languishing like hmm. So because of that, if you think that ATA is not necessary, it's wrong. We need that type of thing, but. It should not be a draconian. And now, when you go through it properly, it's like murder case where a person can be remanded only one year. Here also same. And two months retention order. <coughs> Magistrate had been given all the power to go into that. So those are the fundamental things that are necessary. So that is why I say this has considered the people's view. But when they are going to implement it, we don't know what will happen because of the police are not doing it properly. Mm -hmm. Though the uh, Supreme Court and the other courts have been given necessary guidelines. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, we can't just say abolish this. Mm -hmm. But if we are going to have it in proper way, it sh this should be there to safeguard our security. Thank you very much, uh, President's Council uh, U.R. De Silva. Thank you very much to all our other guests present here today. Thank you very much, uh, Niresh, for joining us on our program and asking all the right questions. And thank you very much to all our viewers out there. Of course, uh, as, as much as we discuss these matters um, on, on, on programs, uh, one might think that what's the point of all of these discussions? Nothing's going to change. But uh, whoever thought that a sitting president in Sri Lanka would be ousted by the power of the people, whoever thought that uh, Sri Lankans uh, would feel so empowered and then so free that they would come out on the streets one day and ask a sitting executive president of Sri Lanka to leave. Uh, that is a clear definition or, or a clear instance where the power of the people was proved to be greater than the people in power. And the people will get that power again next year come the elections and it's up to you to decide and to vote wisely and your vote will decide if Sri Lanka will come out of this crisis or not. Thank you very much for tuning in. Take care and God bless.